Hey, real dealers, this is Charles Blair, the mad scientist, with another episode of Do Rue Interviews, where we interview those thought leaders in the industry that are not just able to tell you how they're doing it, but they're actually doing it themselves. And today, I got a special guest for you today. I got somebody that I've been trying to get on the call on the actual show for the last two weeks. Last week, I had a little bit of issues we need to take care of, but I got him this week. And it's my man all the way from ATL, Mr. D. Stevens. D, introduce yourself to everybody, my brother. Hey, what's up, everybody? This is D. Stevens out of Atlanta, Georgia, via Chattanooga, Tennessee. We flip properties and make money and make people smile. So Chattanooga is <laughs> in the house? Chattanooga, baby. Tennessee. Excellent. Yes, so Excellent. Love. So, man, I, I, I got to tell you guys, behind the scenes, we just had a conversation that I know we should have had the mic on, but we're going to turn the mic on now, right now. So, basically, you're going to want to tune in because this brother is doing some shit out there that hardly I haven't heard that many people talking about. He's crushing it. He's a true transaction engineer. This man is taking it to the next level, real estate investing. D, do me a favor. Tell everybody exactly what who you are, and what you are doing. All right. So my thing is flipping, renovating and flipping. I used to do heavy flips. I, I've gotten away from that. So I've mainly focused on wholesaling, light to medium flips on the renovation. Mm -hmm. uh, we do wholesale a little bit, but wholesaling is not my focus. All right. So what I, we try to do is we do a lot of sub to lease options to get into the deals. And then from there, we work out like a promissory note with the homeowner or the investor who's a tired landlord. And we go in, we fix it up, and then either we assign the project or you we bring in somebody with some more capital doing. to purchase it, up to put on MLS, sell it. And that's, we just do it over and over again. That way, <laughs> instead of getting a, a small wholesale fee, we get a, a big chunk of change. So, so guys, you heard a lot in there. He talked about sub two. He's talking about taking over the properties. He talked about doing promissory notes. So he's covered a whole lot in that one, two minute intro. And that's what we're going to take you down in this actual conversation today. We're going to talk about how this brother is doing it virtually. How many markets you're in right now, D? Man, I lost count, man, because I, I get so many people that, that jump in my inbox won't help. A lot of times they won't help with a JV or something like that. And then if we kick it off, he's like, hey, how about, you know, we do a, another deal. So we do everything from the like Carolinas, California, from Delaware, I was down to Florida. Matter of fact, I'll be in Florida this weekend, Orlando, mm -hmm. speaking at a meetup down there. So, yeah. So, yeah, we just, it's, it's at least 12, at least 12. So, yeah. 12 different markets. Now, my question to you, before we get down this path, I want to, first of all, thank all you guys who are on the broadcast. Beto, thank you for being on the broadcast, my friend. Chris, thank you for being on the broadcast. David, thank you for being on the broadcast. Dwayne, thank you for being on the broadcast. And remember, at any time during this broadcast, if you have any questions, we are currently streaming live on five different networks and four different Facebook channels. So that's a total of nine live streams going on at one time. Leave your comment in the comment section, and I will make sure my man D answer those questions. Thank you very much, guys. I appreciate you guys taking the time. Up again. I mean, they hearting it up. They're liking it up. I got. I mean, I, 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 I'm seeing thumbs up before we even got down to any questions. God damn, this, this show is rolling. So let's let's put some, let's put some meat on that bone, my brother. Tell people exactly okay. how did you get started in the business? What was your direction for moving forward in this business? All right. So I got started when I was a student at Georgia Tech. Uh, I went there for chemical engineering and. After working at a nuclear power plant and working at a nuclear pharmacy, I realized that chemical engineering really wasn't where I wanted to go. So I kind of lost interest in it, but I, I, I had to figure out something. So while working at a nuclear pharmacy, I ran across a guy who uh, did deliveries for the nuclear pharmacy with me. And um, he turned me on to this guy named Carson Sheeks at the time. And I'd seen this commercial late at night when I was just up studying. And but I always turn it off because I'm like, I'm not interested in that because I'm, you know, I'm going to be a chemical engineer, you know. So he was like, dude, you got to look at this guy named Carson Sheets. He's going to show you how to get a house, no money down. And I was like, no money down. What? <laughs> I'm, like, I'm like, man, no. Oh. He said, he's like, look, he even show you how people can pay you to buy the house. And so I was intrigued, but I was in disbelief. I'm like, there's no way possible, man. So 
we, we, we were supposed to go in 50-50, but of course, when it's time to pay, it was like, D, let me get you next week. So I was excited at that point, so I just went ahead and paid. Then we were supposed to study together, we didn't, but that was fine. So I set the whole thing, and I, and I just kind of brought them up to what I learned. And then I was amazed, but I was one of those people that didn't take action, right? I did all the learning. I didn't take action. So some time passed, and just I, I can't remember what struck inside of me, but I was like, look, I need to go back and do this thing with Carlton Sheets. Right. So I kind of brushed up on it. I went looking for some houses, ran to this nice realtor uh, named Sue at the time. And then she she shows a couple of houses. I was like, yeah, yeah, it's nice. But I want to do Carson Sheik. She was like, who is Carson Sheik? <laughs> said, no, don't worry about that. I want to do the Carson Sheik thing. So we ran across this house. It was not move-in ready. I mean, it needed paint, carpet. I mean, it needed several things, right? So I was like, this is the Carson Sheik's house. And she's like, who is that? I said, look, he my man. Don't worry about it. So, you know, I'm talking like like me and him had a beer or something. I'm serious. Right? Like he's living there right <laughs> in your house. <laughs> like, yeah, like he already, he already ready to go, right? So so we, we lowballed the offer. I told him I want to play closing. I want wanted the bank to pay closing costs. It was like a foreclosure situation. And also I want them to pay me for painting carpet, right? I'll pay my contractor, right? So she was like, they're not going to accept this offer. I'm like, yeah, they would. Just, just put it in. Right, so she was reluctant the whole time. I was like, "Look, we have to do what Carson said." She's like, "I don't even know Carson." I was like, "Trust me, <laughs> let's do the Carson thing." Right, so she did it. She called me back, like almost screaming on the phone, like, "I can't believe they they countered. I thought they were just gonna just ignore it." So they countered, and the difference they countered for was the price to take care of closing and pay me like I think it was like seven thousand dollars for painting carpet. Right. So and just so like we, so just like Carlton said, you were just able. Like he said. Just like he said, you were <laughs> able to get them to pay you at closing. They paid me at closing. I was like, what? I was still in disbelief because I was just I was just shooting in the dark, you know. Yeah. Because I was I was like, what? So we end up getting it. Um, I had met a guy from uh, Venezuela who does like handyman stuff at that time. I wasn't doing construction or anything like that. Even though I was still like a fresh student. I was like in my early twenties at the time, and. He went in, he brought in, he painted, did some little repairs, and I still had money left over, right? Then I went on Craigslist, marketing, got two people to rent the room because it was like a four-bedroom house, and I just started cash flowing at that time, and I would just kind of got comfortable. Then I transitioned into, like, home inspections, nice. and then from home inspections, I transitioned to, like, little hanging up ceiling fans and things like that, real, real light handyman stuff. Then the next thing I know, I was doing high-end renovations, like spending, like, people paying $30,000 to tile their ceiling in the bathroom and have you know this mm -hmm. gigantic stand-up shower. I'm like, you gonna spend thirty thousand dollars? I'll take it. <laughs> right, right, right. So so I, I was doing that stuff and then from there I was figuring out like how can I get to the money, right? Back back to the Carson thing. Because the market had changed a little bit. So I really couldn't do exactly everything I did at that first time when I first did the Carson Carson Sheik thing. Mm -hmm. But I I knew there was money into it, but I got comfortable making the renovation money, things like that for homeowners, uh, investors who want to do high-end flips, right? investors who want to do turnkey investments, things like that. So I got comfortable with the money, but my overhead, no matter how high my, my income got, my overhead got high with it. So right. I was like, I need, to, I need to figure out how can I do the investment thing. And so I was talking with one of the guys I was flipping the house for, and I was like, he took me out for a beer, and he was like, hey, you should be an investor. I was like, yeah, but I don't have any money. He said, I, I don't have any money either. I was like, oh, here we go. You're going to try not to pay me. <laughs> like, no, 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 no. It's not like that. He said, what I did was a friend of mine was flipping houses. Right? He flipped like two or three houses. I don't think I did. I took his business plan to a couple of people on a couple of gas stations who were some doctors. And one of them said yes. Just one. One said yes. I will fund you for a deal. And that was when I met you to do the home inspection and do the and do the fix and flip for us, right? He said, you can do the same thing. Mm. All you got to do is sell yourself. That's it. Don't try to sell the project. Don't try to sell uh, experience. Sell you. Sell what value you have. If you meet enough people, they will invest. And so I was like, oh, we, they be. And that's what I started. And I just, I, I, it's just been nonstop ever since. Nice. That's how I got into investing. Somebody so just planted a seed into me. So I know a lot of people who've gotten their start out 
with Carlton Sheets, me being one of those individuals. So yeah. when you first see that infomercial, the first thing that goes across your mind is exactly what you said. You can do real estate with no money out of your pocket. <laughs> and that's been the way in which we've created our business model for the, for the last 30 years. And I know you're doing a lot of stuff right now that really oh, yeah. doesn't require a lot of money. It just require knowing the exit strategies, knowing what you need to do in order to get out of the deal and having that creative mindset. How did you develop oh, yeah. that creative mindset? Was there a mentor out there that you worked with that really took you down that creative path? Or was it still for just you basically learning on your own? Honestly, I just learned from everybody. Everybody mm. I ran into that had any experience in the business, whether they did flips, they did painting, they took out the trash, they cleaned the house, they were investor season, or they were trying to do their first deal, or they failed, whatever. I tried to What I try to do on a daily basis is, is increase my value by 1%, right? Just just 1%, not 10, not no large, just 1%, right? So by learning from all these different people and realizing there were so many different strategies, right? And also, <laughs> this was very important, right? Keep in mind, I was making good money, but I felt like I was broke, right? Uh, so yeah. it was like, I, 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 I quit the nine to five because I was like, I'm not a nine to five kind of guy. Mm -hmm. So I traded in to be a, a, a small business and operator for, for construction and, you know, still doing a home inspection thing. But the thing was, I felt like I was a slave to my, to my business. Right. Yeah. So it was really out of desperation and being tired of being tired. So I just took all the knowledge, all the experiences, all the, everything I did that made me, that brought me to this point, And I said, I'm going to do it. And that's how I got into it. So everybody I ran into was a mentor for me. Gotcha. I, try to, I try to learn from everybody. I don't care if you Max Maxwell or you Joe Blow that don't know anything, mm -hmm. right? Everybody. Now, isn't that a true statement what you just said, man? Because one of the reasons why most people don't get successful in this business is because they don't know what rock bottom feel like. They're not Ooh. able to scratch Ooh. up to the top. And you were able to say, I'm not going to accept this. I can't go any further. I got to make it forward. Exactly, brother. <laughs> That's exactly what it was. Yeah. Right? It was the point that I said, I got to elevate. I know there was something better. I know I was meant for more, right? Besides just doing pretty designs and, you know, making these houses look nice, right? Cause, because I'm telling you, at the end of the day, the people that's getting the money is the investors. Got you. Not, not the contractor. Mm -hmm. Even if you're making a hundred, two hundred and forty thousand dollars a year, right? Right. The one who's making the money is the investor. Because the thing is, he has his money or somebody else's money working for him, right? Exactly. So I had to do a mindset shift. And one of the things I started doing, a friend recommended um, Audible, right? Because mm -hmm. uh, I was, I did a lot of traveling. I still do a lot of traveling. Right. And so I didn't have time to sit down and read an actual book. So, but I could put some ear pods in, headset, yes. I put over the speakers and start reading. So I started reading like Rich Dad, Poor Dad, Thinking Grow Rich. How to win, flames and influence others. Uh, Ten laws of execution. I mean, just, just, I just kept, I just kept reading more and more books, on, or listening to more and more books. Right. And what it did, it, it, it created a shift in my mindset that allowed me to become better at being a transactional engineer. Ah, right? I love that phrase. <laughs> right, right. You yeah. Work, right? Yeah. So it, it, it allowed me to attract the people I wanted. Right. It allowed me to grow in the way that I wanted. That reflected my own personality, my own unique personality. Because you, you, you know me, I like to have fun. I'm silly, mm -hmm. whatever. But you know, when it's time, I, I get to the money. So I needed something that I could do and be myself 100%. And investing, learning, growing with this business has been the thing. I feel like it's a dream. Yeah, you said something that was very near and dear to my heart. Because several years ago, actually about maybe 10 years ago, one of my things I used to do every night before I went to bed. I would put an audio book in my earphones and I would play oh, yeah. it and I would go to sleep with that audio book playing in my ear. <laughs> yes, uh, sir. Yes, so sir. I know exactly what you're saying. And man, we got people up here. Just, just, just one guy said, isn't that the guy to do all the memes? This is Daryl <laughs> Deborah. He's that's the guy to do all the memes, man. You already a celebrity, <laughs> not, yeah, not just I'm, I'm the real the estate, baby. but you're the main guy. So we got yeah, we got I'm Minion on the broadcast. Thank you, my friend. De <laughs> Darrell, thank you for being on the broadcast. Deborah, thank What's you for up, being baby? on the broadcast. Uh, Minion, Beto, thank you. Big Brother in Life is on the broadcast coming from YouTube. 
Uh, so, Dwayne, thank you for being on the broadcast. Man, this is basically an inside look of what we call, I call, a real transaction engineer. This brother is doing it in at least 12 different markets. Now, that's something that I know is a very hot topic in our industry. How are you able mm -hmm. to really maintain and crush it, not just in your home base, but in multiple mm -hmm. markets around the country? Empowering other people. <laughs> That's how I do it. Empower other people. I find people with certain personality types who wanna who wanna give more than they take, right? People who have grit, who are intelligent, who wanna recruit, who wanna scale up what they're doing in operations, right? Because a lot of people reach reach out to me because they see me in wholesale groups, right? right? They see me like you know wholesaling lead, you know what I'm saying A to Z, you know all of them, right? But what I do is is more advanced level things. Right. And I don't recommend doing it if you're a newbie. Now that you got somebody you can partner with who's had experience doing it. So they a lot of people reach out to me. If I like them, they like me, you know, we, we do a couple of deals together and we go for it. Right. So one of the things I do is first start off with a wholesale, a basic wholesale. I don't care, we make a dollar on it, right? That way you can you can feel what it feels like to go through our entire process, right? Then another thing we do is we look at, okay, how can we do a lease option or sub two on this deal, right? So instead of always asking, hey, would you like to sell your house or would you like cash for your house? Would you like to, would you be interested in leasing it? Nice. So, are you doing rent to home? You know, so we just, we just switch our script up just a little bit on a couple of pointers and it changes the whole direction, right? Would you be interested in if I came in, I fix it up and then maybe gave you some money at the end of the deal? Right, I give you some money at the beginning and, and some money at the, at the end. Right, so you're not just getting one time money. You can get at least two times. Exactly. You so I, I just talk to people like that, and then and, and it just and I show my show my students how to do it, and people I team up with, and we just do it. Right, we all have our set roles, what we're supposed to do, what the VA does, what I do, what they do, how they recruit, how we go out and raise capital, how we speak to buyers, even how we go out and speak to other contractors. Right like roofers, for example, right? They're some of the best salesmen in this business, right? So right. a roofer's no can be our yes, <laughs> right? <laughs> Maybe they can't afford a roof, but that's because they, they need to sell their house or they're in free foreclosure, right? But the roofer has already established a point of contact and they like it. So we recruit roofers and say, hey man, this is our plan, this is what we wanna do. And in those particular markets, while they're doing it, and we, we go to like a mid-level guy, the top guy. And then from there, we just put them, hey, put them on the team. And then whatever they don't get for the roof, we get it. And then if we get the house and we want to put a roof on, he still get the roofing job. Nice, <laughs> I mean, just simple nice. stuff like that by really just networking and delegating tasks, right? Because I used to be a person where I will try to do everything all myself because I knew I could do it better than anybody else. And of I was course. burnt out, spinning my tail, not doing shit, right? And like I say, from read, listening to the books <laughs> and Audible, it starts to teach you how to really delegate, how to do marketing, attraction marketing for certain types of personalities, and then how to connect with them, how to build them and grow with them. So that's it. So you do this over and over again, it becomes easy. Everybody has their own thing, then show them how to how to attract people up under them, whether they need a couple of people driving, they need somebody pulling the list, they need to skip tracing, whatever, they need somebody to go and take some pictures, whatever it is. And that's it. So it just it just set up. Like that, and just do another marketing, do another market, and keep going. Excellent, man. Excellent. What are some of the the marketing strategies that you are seeing um, great results with in your business right now? Well, my number one source is driving for dollars, mm. right? So that's 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 number one. Uh, I know a lot of people pull lists, probate things like that, but my number one is driving for dollars. Number two is prop string. If you don't have it, you need to get it. <laughs> yeah, <laughs> I agree with you. I agree with you. Need to you. get it. <laughs> okay. And you need to understand like how it works, the heat maps, uh, knowing where the hot zip codes are for that particular city. And because the houses are selling in that area, it doesn't mean it's a hot zip code. I mean, you need to look at uh, how long it's days on the market, how much they're selling for based on the asking price and things like that. So once you get into all that, you, you'll know which ones are the hot ones and which one are the lame ones. Okay? Go ahead, preacher Steven. I hear you, <laughs> so, brother. Preach on. So, so when you when you so between those two between pooling high equity lists, uh, liens, and if you need depending on your marketing, our mm -hmm. marketing is cold calling. So we don't go too deep on a multi levels of motivation. 
we do about two or three, make sure we, we're within the range for like, what's the average house selling? So if the average house selling for this particular zip code right. is $150,000, I'm not going to look for houses at $300,000 in the zip code, <laughs> right? <laughs> I'm looking for houses that's closer to the average because I'm looking to be in and out on a deal, right? So I look for houses on a maximum on your filter settings and prop string that fit that criteria. If I know three bedroom, two baths are selling, I'm looking for three bedroom, two baths. Excellent, excellent. Now I got my man Dwayne said uh, you make it very simple. You're making it so easy for people to understand. He really thank you for being on the broadcast, man. Giving your sharing yeah, yeah. information. Art is thanking you for being on the broadcast. Beto again. Uh, Steve Larray says thank you, my friend. Give me a yeah, sense. Yeah. Uh, how, when did it click for you? I know for a lot of investors, they say that when they make that first check they know that real estate investing works. They know it's for real. When did it really <laughs> click for you that you could, you was, you could do it one and that you was really good at doing it? Um, I think it clicked for me a long time ago. It was just really taking action. Like a lot of people, we, we, we watch the YouTube videos, we, we, we study, but we never take the action, right? I ended up taking the action because I just had to. I had, I had, to, I had, to, had, to, had to change, right? right. Mm -hmm. But when it really clicked for me, when it really clicked is a partner of mine, we over leveraged ourselves. We had, we, had, we had some money, we put into too many properties, we spread ourselves too thin, and we had to sell the properties quickly, but we sold them off market, right? So when, when we were able to bounce back from that, I was like, I got it. I know what we need to do. <laughs> it made you then, feel, it made you feel invincible like the Teflon Don, huh? Yeah, it was it was like sink or swim, right? right. Mm -hmm. so it was like I know what we need to do, and that's that's what we've been doing. Like at the house I'm at right now in South Georgia, we use some of the same principles that we used when we took those L's to do this deal here, right? Like for example, and just to do it briefly, right? Mm -hmm. This house was for sale by owner on the market MLS for like probably like five years. It was on that so many days, oh, right? <laughs> I mean, it wasn't on a five years. It's probably like 200. I know. Days. I know what you mean. I know what you mean. <laughs> so, so it felt like forever, right? So we went in, gave the guy an offer, and we was like, hey, how about you? We work together so the house can get sold. Well, I need to have it at this price. I'm like, okay, baby. You can have it at that price. No problem. <laughs> All right? But this is how we need to do it. So what we did, it was 30. he wanted 35. I said, cool, no problem. Give him 35, right? Tell my partner how to do the whole thing, right? Give him 35. And then tell them, hey, we want to do a promissory note. We promise to pay you after we sell the house, right? So we came in. We had a budget of 15. We ended up spending 17. You know that happens with, with real estate. Right. Right? So we spent 17. And then we found the investor that were buying turnkey properties in the area, which is why we targeted this area anyway. Because we knew people were buying houses, but they were also buying rentals, right? So we were in it for 35, spent 17 to for labor materials. Mm -hmm. The guy want to buy for 85. Now, the good thing about the guy, he's an investor, right? We told him the whole thing, what we're doing. He said, okay, I'll pay closing. Don't worry about a realtor. And I was like, bet, right? So we got that. So we saved money on the 6% on the realtor fee. Exactly. And closing, right? Kind of like a D. Stevens, Carson Sheets version, 2019. Exactly. Right? <laughs> right? Now, this is not a 17. This is the kicker, though. The 17, we didn't pull, any, we didn't pull any money out of our pocket. Nice. Right? We used a Home Depot card, <laughs> and a Mastercard. Now that is that is Colton Sheets. I remember what page that was on. That is inside of Colton Sheets. <laughs> so so we we got the house on a promissory note. Got Home Depot loads and Mastercard to fund the deal. Got a guy to pay the Home Depot loads and Mastercard off, and pay the guy, and we kept the rest. That's it. You do it, and you do it again, over and over again. And you, and, it, and the person, and th think about this. Think about this, guys. What you're hearing, this guy actually gave them the house on a promissory note. And you know what? They could, he could care less about your credit. Your credit had nothing to do with it. Nothing. It's all about what you just said. You, you were able to sell you. Yes. And once you're able to do that, now yes, it's just a yes, matter yes. of. People like doing business with people who they like, know, and trust. And when you sell you, you got that feeling from that person. Boom. That's facts right there. That's it. You're selling yourself. You're selling this idea that you know that can, that can make happen, right? 
And sometimes you got to show, like, here, here, here's a couple of renovations we've done mm-hmm. so you can see the quality of the work, right? Because everybody's renovation is not the same, right? And I've done high level, like, some stuff you'll see on HGTV kind of level renovations, right? So he sees this saying, we're going to pay for it out of our own pocket. We're going to market and sell your property and get you exactly what you asked for, right? And we can do this in a short period of time and everything's beautiful. That's it. You do this over and over again. Just that one strategy, you can make a lot of money. Well, a man, lot of money. So, I mean, based on what you're doing, 12 different markets, at least uh, multiple exit strategies, uh, working with your students that you're working with, uh, going around the country speaking. What's next? I mean, what what is there? What is there next to conquer? <laughs> well, I, w- I want to do multifamily. So mm. uh, the thing is to put you know about two three hundred thousand dollars to the side, then maybe do some syndication or something like that, bring some people in mm-hmm. and do multifamily housing. So that's what we're gonna do. Two thousand twenty. That's the goal. Nice, man. I don't know where the, the 30 minutes went at, but it flew by. Oh, man, it's 30 minutes. 30 <laughs> minutes. It, it has flown by already, man. I mean, like okay. I said, we got people here that are saying thank you very much. Smiling faces from Dwayne. Matt, thank you for being on the broadcast. Uh, how can someone reach out to you, um, D, if they want to get in touch with you, want to work with you, or just basically want to, to follow you? How can somebody reach out to you? Just just, just type in D Stevens, D-E-E, then Stevens would have been. On uh, Facebook, I- I'm right there. You'll see it, right? And just add me, send a request. But make sure you, s- I get so many requests. Shoot me a message. That's the best thing to do. I get a lot of requests and things like that. Shoot me a, shoot me a DM, and then I- I- I'll go ahead and add you. But most importantly, convince you why you should work with them. Oh yeah, <laughs> there you go. There you oh, go. There you go. Sell yourself. You go. They got to sell themselves. Yeah. Now, yeah, you got to sell yourself. Beto said, "Bam." Thank you guys for tuning in. This is Charles Blair, the Mad Scientist. Thank you, D, for being on this broadcast, dropping that knowledge, dropping those nuggets. Yes, sir. Greatly appreciate your time, my friend. And each and everybody, welcome, thank you for tuning in. Uh, we're looking forward to seeing you guys next week. Take care. This is Charles Blair, the Mad Scientist, signing out. Do interviews. We're out of here. Take it easy, guys.